Good day, two piece. Uh, today we're going to talk about common factoring and our goal. I know what a common factor is and I can divide it out of a polynomial to create a product, which is a multiplication question. Uh, so we're going to look at the distributive law first. We've already reviewed this, but I want to make sure we understand it again. Uh, when I say expand, I mean take this front uh, monomial and multiply it through the brackets just like that. So when I multiply 3x by 4x I get 12x squared and then if I follow the second arrow I'm going to multiply 3x by 1 and get plus 3x. Um, now when we were doing that this is what math operation did you use to expand the problem? Well hopefully you heard me say multiply in there a few times so we were actually using multiplication. So to reverse that process we're going to need to use division because division is the reverse of multiplication. Uh, it isn't always easy to see what we should divide back out of the expression. We need to find the greatest common factor of the terms. So we're going to start by looking at these two terms here and see if we can find the greatest common factor. Now I know you did greatest common factor back in elementary school. Um, this is a little bit different because we have some x's involved here and the x's are also factors. Remember a factor is something that multiplies to make something else. So this expression right here, this 12x squared, is really 12 times x times x. So it has both x and the two x's, which make x squared, as a factor. And this over here is 18 times x times x times x. So what we want to do is figure out what's common to both 12x squared and 18x cubed. So step one, determine the greatest common factor of the coefficients. So let's start with the coefficients here. We've got 12 and 18. What's the biggest number that goes into both 12 and 18? Well, if you don't know, start thinking about all the numbers that go into 12 and 18. Uh, 1 and 12 go into 12. Uh, 2 and 6 go into 12. And 3 and 4 go into 12. And since we've met in the middle here, we know we've got them all. Now for 18, uh, 1 and 18. 2 and 9. 3 and 6. Does 4 go into 18? No. 5? No. And then I hit the 6 coming down the other way, so I know I've got them all. Now we want the biggest number that goes into both 12 and 18, so we start looking backwards here. Uh, 12 isn't in both of them. Oh, there it is. 6 is in both of them, and that's the biggest number that's in both of them. So the greatest common factor between the two coefficients is 6. Let's see what step 2 says. Step two says determine variables common to all. Uh, well, that's easy. They have some x's. Um, so obviously they have x's that are common to all. Uh, so we put down an x. And step three says determine how many variables they each have in common. Basically, you're looking for the lowest exponent. If a variable has no exponent, we know it has to be one. So if we're taking a look at what we've got here, this one has two x's and this one has three x. So they both have at least two x's. So what we know is that since they both have at least two x's, x squared is actually our common factor. So if we put all of this together, the greatest common factor is actually 6x squared. So that's the biggest common factor between those two things. Let's practice on a couple other ones. So between 12x and 24, well the biggest number that goes into 12 and 24 at the same time is actually 12. Um, they both have at least 1x and this one actually only has 1x so that we can say they both have at least 1x. 12x is as much as we can get. Now between 14 and 35, the biggest number that goes into both of those is 7. And they both have x's, so we have an x here. And this one has 2 and this one has 3, so they both at least got 2 x's, so the greatest common factor is 7x squared. Now in the next one, having a look, 16, 24, and 40. The biggest number that goes into those is 8. And again, they all have an x, and since this one only has 1x, we can say they all have at least 1x, even though these ones are much, much 
they've got many more x's than just one, we still say that the greatest common factor is just plain 8x. Now, reversing the distributive law means that I'm going to divide it out. So this is also known as common factoring. So if you're given an expression, you should always look to see if you can divide something, the same thing, out of every term. And by the same thing, I mean a common factor. So let's take a look. This says determine the GCF of the terms and place it in front of a set of brackets. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, the biggest number that goes into 12, 9, and 15 is 3. They all have x's. And since this one only has one x, I say they have at least one x, and I can't take out any more, because this one only has one. So now what I have to do is divide each of these terms by 3x, and that's what's going to go in my set of brackets there. So when I divide each of these terms by 3x, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and I put that there. If I've got x to the fifth and I divide it by 1x, I have x to the fourth plus 9x cubed divided by 3x. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and x cubed divided by 1x, remember we subtract the exponents and we understand that's 1, so this is going to be x squared. And then 15 divided by 3 is 5, and the two x's divide to 1. So I could write this as 5 times 1, but we don't usually put the times 1 in there because we know it's kind of useless. So this is now in factored form. We've taken the GCF and we divided it out of each of those terms and put our answer in the bracket. Now if I wanted to, I could use distributive law and go back, back it out again to see if I get the same answer. And I'm doing this in the same color because I don't want you to do, in a different color, because I don't want you to do this every time. 3 times 4 is 12. x times x to the 4th is x to the 5th, because I got 1x here, 4x's here, that gives me 5x's multiplied together, plus 3 times 3 is 9, and 1x, and two more x's multiplied together there gives me 3x's all multiplied together, so I write x cubed. Now 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, and there's only 1x being multiplied in here, so 15x. Now take a look, that's the same thing that I started with, so I must have done it right in the first place. Now I don't need you to do this every time, but you can if you want to check your answer. Now we're going to do this for a couple of more, so first thing we have to do is find the biggest number that goes into both the 10 and the 5, and the answer to that is 5. And since this term has no x there, I can't say that x is part of the common factor, so 5 is the only thing I can divide out. And I need to divide both of these things by 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. I didn't divide any x's away, so I still need that x there. And then subtract 5 divided by 5 is 1. Going down to the next one, the biggest number that goes into 20 and 15 uh, is 5 again. But this time they both have an x, and this one only has 1x, even though this one's got 2, this one only has 1, so I can only divide out 1x. So now I'm going to divide both of these things by 5x, and I'm going to put my answer in the bracket here. So 20 divided by 5 is 4, and x squared divided by 1x is just x. And over here, 15 divided by 5 is 3, and x divided by x is 1, but I don't write times 1, so we just leave it. And this last one, biggest number that goes into 8, 6, and 2, well, that's going to be 2. They all have x's, and this one only has 1x, even though these ones have more, they all have at least 1x, so I'm going to put an x there. Now remember, I have to divide all of these things by 2x to get what goes in the bracket. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, x to the 4th divided by x is x cubed, x cubed divided by x, oh, I forgot to do 6 divided by 2, is going to give me 3, and then x cubed divided by x is just x squared, and lastly 2x divided by 2x is 1. Now we do write it this time because there's nothing to multiply it with. If it was a multiplied by 1, we don't write it, but since it's only 1 that's there, we have to write it. You'll always get as many terms in the brackets as you started with in the question, so keep that in mind. Now the last one says, the area of a rectangle is 10x squared, let's draw a rectangle, 
anytime you hear something that says the area of a rectangle or area of a triangle, you need to draw a rectangle or a triangle. The area of a rectangle is 10 x squared minus 5x. Find an expression for the length and the width of the rectangle. Well, I need something up here for length and something here for width, so I need to factor this to figure out the two things that multiplied together to give me 10x squared minus 5x. So let's take a look. 10x squared minus 5x. What's the biggest number that goes into both of those? Well, that's going to be 5, and they both have an x, so I'm going to take the x out. And remember, I have to divide both of these things by 5x. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, x squared divided by x is just x, and then 5x divided by 5x is minus 1. So now, which one of these things do we think is length and which is width? Well, I'm going to say that I really believe that 5 times x is going to be a lot bigger than 2x minus 1. So I'm thinking this is going to be the length and this is going to be the width. So it says find an expression for length and width. Well, I'm going to say the length is 5x and the width is 2x minus 1. And that's that for that question. Please do your homework or your practice work.